our first thought in an emergency. Fetch a policeman. He'll know how to handle it. Now, why are we so certain of this? We'll have to put back the clock a long time to find out. Here's the first reason. Years ago, when he decided to try and join the police, he had to produce guarantees of good character. And he had to have a certain physique, height and girth, and a high standard of physical fitness. And there were other qualifications. Now, you've had a medical examination and uh, an educational paper. Now you're going to have an intelligence test. In this test, the man with a superior education has no advantage over the others. Is that clear? Yes, sir. If he passed all these preliminary tests, he was accepted as a recruit. But even before he started training, he took an oath. And that while I continue to hold the said office, I will discharge the duties thereof to the best of my skill and knowledge. And that while I continue to hold the said office, I will discharge the duties thereof to the best of my skill and knowledge. Faithfully, according to law, without fear, favour, affection, malice or ill will, that is the oath of service to the public that the policeman we call on has sworn. And we know that he's a proper man to bear this responsibility, an intelligent man to make decisions, and a fit man to carry them out. But there's another reason we call on him with confidence. He knows what to do. He knew that it was wrong for unskilled helpers to attempt to move the driver before he had satisfied himself that there was no internal injury. He knew how to dress wounds, how to secure an upper arm fracture. In fact, he knew how to handle a situation. What cooperation to seek from the public? and what aid to call in from his own headquarters. Police information room. Accident at Rand Street and Ledson Street. Yes. 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 Right. Ambulance, junction of Rand Street and the Ledson Street. Calling M5. Blue Rover Saloon, EOH745, failed to stop after accident at Lady Wood. Now proceeding towards Coventry. Intercept. Further details to follow. Message received and understood. M5 closing down. In any town or village in Britain, the ordinary constable can set the police machine in motion. It's an efficient machine, but its efficiency depends on the individuals who make it, finally on the constable on his beat. Let's turn back the clock again to see how he became efficient. He's on parade for the first time, with a shiny new truncheon, a whistle he's never blown, and an empty notebook. Return your appointments. One beat, 208. He's had three months training to prepare him for this moment. His instructors have given him the necessary background. Now it's up to him to see if he can make a success of the actual job. This is his beat. He's on his own now, self-conscious in his new uniform, <laughs> a little unsure of himself. He's thinking perhaps of some spectacular coup, but he'll find that it's largely a matter of routine, of helping people rather than tracking them down. And he doesn't know all the answers yet. He doesn't even know where the nearest telephone box is, but he'll learn. He'll get to know his own town so that he can cope with any problem. From the traveller who's looking for a bed for the night to the spots where people's vegetables have a habit of disappearing. As his notebook begins to fill up, he grows more proficient every day, able to deal with the intricacies of the traffic acts, able to spot an overladen coal cart. He learns the knack of handling people in the best school of all, the beat. At the end of two years, his notebook holds the secret of how he's mastered the job experience based on training. Before he was allowed on the beat for the first time, he spent three months at a police school 
learning the theory of police work in all its aspects. It was the notes he took then that helped him to learn quickly how to deal with the many problems, big or little, which he encountered during his probationary period in uniform. For instance, how to recognize a lost child, even when it seemed as if it hadn't a care in the world. A point to remember, some kids have more self-confidence than some grown men and women. Or to know when boys scrapping can safely be ignored and when they need breaking up promptly to save juvenile black eyes. Another point. Better appeal to fair play than talk technicalities about breaches of the peace. And another. Seems to remember scrapping myself once. Understanding how a motor car engine works helped the constable to deal with motorists on the beat. He gave him the advantage of knowing as much as they do. And traffic control. He learned the various ways of controlling a crossing automatically, as well as the proper way of handling traffic and pedestrians on point duty. If you keep pedestrians waiting too long, they'll have to take their lives in their hands and make a dash for it. <laughs> and some of them like an escort. He learned how to deal with rough customers who don't stick to the Queensbury rules. People rely on a policeman when it comes to a scrap, however hefty the opponent he has to tackle. So, jiu-jitsu comes in useful if the other chap's got the advantage in pounds or pints. A good judo grip can save a lot of argument around closing time. Lantern slides were used in many parts of his training. These slides taught him the point to look for when identifying or describing anybody. A policeman's got to be observant. He's on the lookout all the time for something out of the ordinary or for something he's been told about in the special instructions. Stolen from High Street on the 10th inch, a gent's BSA sports pedal cycle. Racing handlebars upturned. Red and white bands on down tubes. Detection of crime is one of the four main functions of the policeman on the beat, but catching the thief is only half the job. So our recruit was trained how to present a case by taking part in model trials in the reproduction of an actual courtroom. The police don't make the laws in Britain, and they don't judge those who have broken them. They may bring a case to the courts and lose it, but it remains their responsibility to collect evidence against suspects and see that all proved breaches of the law are punished. The detection and prevention of crime is only one part of their function. More important even than the safeguarding of property is the safeguarding of life. Our constable had to gain a life-saving certificate. And he had to pass an examination in first aid. Another two among the many subjects in which he had to prove himself proficient before he was allowed out on the beat. So now we understand why we call on a policeman in an emergency. He's an expert, with brains as well as brawn, trained by experts, confident in his own experience, and bound to help you by his oath. The police in Britain are unarmed. They have no arbitrary powers. Primarily, they are a body of civilians specially organized to preserve the peace and protect life and property. They are not, and never have been, an instrument of oppression. Because of this, there is a relationship in Britain of mutual trust and helpfulness between police and public. The lorry driver is bound to help the policeman, and the policeman exists to help the people. He grew up out of the common law duty which makes every citizen of Britain responsible for the maintenance of law and order. As he takes statements from potential witnesses and measures the scene of the accident, our constable is only doing what we ourselves would have to do if there were no policeman to do it for us. But he's doing it more efficiently because he's a specialist, a specialist in many different skills. He's given first aid to the casualty, He's sent for an ambulance, he's taken steps to have the runaway driver caught, he's sent his patient to hospital, taken statements from the bystanders, made a detailed plan of the scene of the accident, and now he clears the road for traffic. He's master of the situation, of any situation, because he's mastered his job. 
And it's an exacting job, a job which calls for knowledge, courage, a good memory, quick decision, and a great deal of kindly tolerance. He enforces rules made by the community in his own interest, but he remains a member of the community he serves. <laughs>